Good evening, you're watching Left, Right and Centre. I'm Nidhi Razdan. On the show tonight, the Aam Aadmi Party gets ready with the draft of its controversial Swaraj Bill, which will give sweeping powers to Mohalla Sabhas. Is this decentralisation of power good for democracy or will it lead to mob rule, as critics say, setting up urban car panchayats? Also tonight, the CBI charge sheet serving intelligence bureau officers in the Isha Jaha fake encounter case. Does the tussle between the CBI and the IB set a dangerous precedent? That's a little later in the show, but first, next week, the AAP government in Delhi is getting ready to pass its controversial Swaraj Bill, which seeks to empower people by decentralization through the creation of Mohalla Sabhas. While the idea is radical and many welcome it, others fear that local bodies are being given sweeping powers and the result may be mob rule instead. The Aam Aadmi Party is ready to pass the Swaraj Bill next week, which decentralizes power to Mohalla Sabhas. The draft calls for all registered voters residing in a Mohalla, including the homeless, to form a Mohalla Sabha and elect two representatives. But in a contentious move, all decisions are to be taken through consensus. However, if that's not possible, then decisions shall be taken through a simple majority vote. The Mohalla Sabhas are supposed to look at welfare of senior citizens and the disabled, maintain and upkeep public assets. The concern, though, is whether these local bodies are being given sweeping powers. The bill says, for example, that they can recall a councillor and a Mohalla Sabha representative. The police have to register an FIR if any case is referred to them by the Mohalla Sabha. And if 50% of Mohalla Sabhas endorse a change in a law or formation of a new one, the government shall formulate the policy or bring the legislative proposal before the assembly. Funds function functionaries ki taakat nahi jayegi, tab tak ye choriyan hoti rahi. But the Congress fears this could lead to more policing and calls the idea half-baked. They are just into gimmickries. The BJP questions if this idea is new at all. We always take the uh, opinion and advice and consultation from the resident welfare associations, from the uh, Mohalla Sabhas in the uh, uh, city. I don't know what is this new idea. From representative democracy to a participatory one, how much will this experiment succeed in a nation of a billion plus? Well, the first challenge is to get the Swaraj bill passed in the Assembly. Reporting from New Delhi, Anshul Vora, NDTV. So is this decentralization of power to the people a good thing? Is it democratic or would it set a dangerous precedent and lead to mob rule instead? We have Shazia Ilmi, spokesperson of the Aam Aadmi Party, joining us tonight. Also, Captain Gopinath, member of AAP, joining us from Bangalore. Chandan Mitra, Rajya Sabha MP of the BJP, joining us this evening from Delhi. And Siddharth Bhatia, commentator and senior journalist, joins us tonight uh, from Mumbai. Shazia, first, you know, the, the concerns that people have, that this would lead to mob rule and create urban khap panchayats. How would you address those concerns? concerns. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, what are the checks and balances that would be in place to ensure that these Mohalla Sabhas don't have sweeping powers? I think anybody who says that is either ill-informed or is part of some uh, uh, propaganda machinery, uh, you know, because it has nothing to do with carbs at all. It has nothing to do with doing something that is unconstitutional. This is about healthcare, education, roads. This is, this is about the MLA LAT fund being scrapped, whereby the MLA has wide sweeping and discretionary powers and has no connect with the people who just want the quality of their lives to improve. Whether it's, uh, whether it's you know, we have uh, in our uh, constituencies and some of them uh, that we have uh, contested from, you know, they have fountains there where there are no parks. So it's, it's just a way to make money. So we will just go to people and say, what do you want? And the, the, uh, the untied funds will be tied to this and actually address the needs of the people. So all people want sometimes is dhalaos to be cleaned up and, and there to be better uh, program for sanitation. But nobody, but, but the MLA concerns feels that this is not something they should do. They, so the, the idea is for the elected representative to listen to the people and use the funds accordingly. Anything unconstitutional would not be would not be welcome because it would be illegal. 
it has nothing to do with muslim personal law or the hindu joint family act or um, any of those it has nothing to do uh, with uh, with khaps or marriages or coercion but isn't it shazia the concern is, is that it, it is going to be people. basically majoritarianism the concern is that it would be majoritarianism so for instance if uh, as the bill the draft bill says if something cannot be arrived at with a consensus then you would vote on uh, a mohalla sabha would vote on something by a simple majority is that that doesn't necessarily mean it's right if the majority wants something that doesn't necessarily mean it's it's yes, right and what about the minority nidhi nidhi uh, for instance in uh, there were there was these uh, flowers made in vasant vihar rautula marg which costed i don't know the amounts but it's some some 340 740 crores i'm very bad with figures i mean there's so many of them floating around in my head nobody wanted it it was imposed on the people don't you think people who live in the area should have a right in the matter shouldn't people decide as to whether the land which is to be transferred or whether a settlement is to be created or people have juggies have to be removed at least there to be a plan in place does it have to be discretionary when a few people sitting in power who do not even visit their own constituency decide is that all right i think that has created this 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 anarchy this complete lawlessness this uh, the state of affairs where people are dying are thirsty for governance and mohalla sabhas are a brilliant idea because all over the world through counties and boroughs the local councils have the power so this is decentralization you there are okay, some okay let me take that to mr chandan mitra we have a primary school teachers yeah. don't come here Ch mr mitra is it is it that mainstream parties are critical of this move because it's something that is in a sense very radical the sort of self governance uh, at this level that uh, that the aam aadmi party is representing or do you genuinely believe that it will promote majoritarianism which may not necessarily uh, be the rule of law well nidhi there are several problems with this idea uh so just because something is radical i am not rejecting it radical ideas have always moved the world there is nothing wrong with the radical idea but i am afraid that this mohalla sabha business and the dictatorial powers being handed over to mohalla sabhas is fraught with many many dangers first of all what uh, the question i would like to ask is that if everything is going to be handled by mohalla sabhas why do we need a government at all why elect mlas why elect mps everything can be done by mohallas you are um, delhi for instance funding comes basically from the center now then the mohallas of money can be given to mohalla sabhas and they can spend it as they wish and they will and we all know how mohalla sabhas or even rwas are conducted how there are group fights how there is no agreement ever uh, on uh, issues and how those elections also uh, are i would say not the best type of elections that are held so under the circumstances i think we may as well as, uh, abolish the state assembly we may as well cease um, delhi wide cease to elect mps and we only have our local um, civil thanedar who will decide everything no but uh, no no but you know that that's that that may not be a fair argument i are you opposed to decentralization of power or the way it's being done that's the question look lot of decentralization has been brought in i must say initiated by rajiv gandhi on the panchayat and nagar palika schemes there is there are already established institutions through which the system is operating uh, i have been a member of the rural development committee for many years in parliament and now the kind of uh, system with uh, checks and balances gram sabha to panchayat panchayat to zila um, uh, panchayat and various uh, levels things have to go through people are routinely and regularly consulted and there is a cooperation between government officials and the people at the grassroots and system is working fine why create one more authority one more institution uh, why duplicate uh, responsibilities and lead to utter chaos so and this is the problem about to arise and how do we get this in result okay quick response from shazia before i come to captain gopinath yes shazia i think this is this is a problem now this is where i disagree he think the system is running fine and i don't think system is running fine and i think if you go to citizens of whether they are of affluent areas or otherwise they would tell you there is something wrong with the way system is running 
Now, this is exactly what we want to talk about, that we want to deepen the idea of democracy and make the elected representatives answerable to the people and accountable to the people who have, in fact, elected them instead of the respective parties. I know from R.K. Puram, three crores were spent in three years on, on benches, people. just naming the, na the, the MLA concerned. I think it's such a travesty and this is our money after all. So if people want to say, look, we don't want benches. We want a better school. We want four teachers instead of two teachers. We want public toilet. I think people should have a right and say. What, what, I don't think it should the, be the monopoly the 50 of elected people in the colony and the contract of what friends. About, what about the 50 and people in a colony of say 300 people that do want benches because they like to take a walk? I'm just giving you a silly example, but I'm just saying that uh, are, are yes, they not entitled yes, to benches? They might, yeah, but th these are benches. These are benches where there are no parks. These are benches where there are no parks. And again, two thirds of the people feel, some people feel there should be benches, some people feel the primary school should have teachers. And, uh, and two thirds of the, of the general body of the Mohalla Sabha would decide that. Think about yeah, it, Nidhi. Yeah, yes, Mr. Mitra, yes. I think the answer is very simple. This is going well, to be a this, game changer. Yeah, Imani, another in, in another thing that has been talked about, about rule of law. This is the rule of law. Shall because yeah. the constitution guarantees that and the parliament okay, and the okay, legislature no. reflect Mr. Mitra the wants will to of the you people. On that point. But I'm afraid in the public spending, no, no, we, there we, is no we, we reflection of the will of the people. But, the, but you see, the Mohalla Sabha, the Mohalla Sabha can take a, take a view on everything. Including whether there should be policing in the colony or no policing. And if the Mohalla Sabha says we don't want policing there, if two thirds of the Mohalla Sabha that. says we don't want, uh, want, don't want I policing, I just said that that is will, will illegal. Will I agree? just said that would I be mean, illegal. Wow, it's a skewed get? argument. It's no. a fake argument. So, so it is not so. there. It doesn't apply. Please read it. I don't think you know what you're talking it is about. Not. It is not. It has to do with no, public you, you, spending, party, public expenditure. It has, to do, it has to do with the budget. It has to do with schools there and roads. Roads keep on. Mr. Mitra, please understand. Shazia, Mr. Mitra, please understand. Don't make. Shazia, one minute. No, I cannot. Your, Shazia, your listen to him. Shazia, Shazia, one second. Shazia, let everyone else speak. Yeah, one second. No, one second. Because this is not what what Swaraj Bill is all about. No, no. Let let him make his point. One point. One point. This is Swaraj Bill is not about that. One point. Yes. It is not about I policing. I am not giving this example. It is about public expenditure. I am not giving it's this example. Very... Shazia, one second. Yeah. I am not making this point in a void. Shazia Ilmi's party has expressed the view that there should be a kind of opinion uh, sought about whether people in Kashmir want the Indian army to be present there. So this can very well be extended to every place saying, do you want the police here? Do you, uh, do you want security guards? I've already answered you, that. I mean, See, this what, is why I need to stop. This is why it, I need to. Right this is to why say, I need to say this. Say, no, say, this has nothing Mohila. to do with that. Please be patient, Shazia. Shazia, let him finish. Let him finish. Do you let have him nothing finish. to say? Please, you, please be patient. Mr. Mitra, you have. Shazia, let let everyone no, make their point. Want something else? Shazia, well. Shazia, please let him not. No, one minute, please. Let, let I have already said patient. something illegal and unconstitutional is not part of it. I, no, I, no, no, Nidhi, Nidhi, you have to explain what Swaraj Bill is. I know, but let, no, I think I we can do it without so interrupting. Shadia, please, let's not talk over everybody else on the panel. Please, okay. come on, you've been an anchor as well. You know I'll how say, it's I'll not an easy job. Again. I'll yeah, yeah. So, other people, other yeah, let them finish their points. Yes, and I'd like to come to everyone else now. Typical of the autocratic, autocratic and authoritarian, autocratic and authoritarian attitude of the Ahmadmi party. You, do, you want to stifle not every other voice. Not to the collective. A leader can be right, dictatorial, right. not the everything whole Mahalla Sabha. Okay, I'm going to move away from this, the mark. I'm going to move away from this to Captain Gopinath. Your self-righteousness. Ca Captain Gopinath, let me ask you, sir. Yeah, how would this practically work, point? this idea? Okay, the idea, for instance, that the police uh, would have to register an FIR if a Mohalla Sabha uh, so desires it. Now, in Delhi, it's a unique situation where the police doesn't report to the Delhi government or to authorities in Delhi, it comes under the Ministry of Home Affairs. How would something like that work practically on the ground? Or just anything like, uh, you know, for, for instance, the bench example. Uh, are you going to, you know, take a vote every time any decision has to be taken, whether it is to set up a ba bench, paint a gate black or red? Uh, is that practical? Is, is that possible? Can it work? Captain Gopinath. I think uh, I would like to come to a larger issue uh, because I just went through this uh, draft uh, uh, some time ago. Uh, you know, uh, on the face of it, it appears to me very reactionary. Uh, uh, I think the issues are, I think, I think, totally different. 
see the existing system is already decentralized the problem is one of governance and punishing the people who misuse those funds or misuse their positions so that is exactly why this Janlok Pal bill and the, the, the also at the state level the Loka Yukta and uh, separating these investigation agencies are so important so because replacing one uh, Grama Sabha with a Mohalla Sabha or a Panchayat with a Mohalla Sabha will not uh, you know change the change the problem or the or the or the sickness in society uh, so see today for example if an MP misuses any funds or in the panchayat level people misuse funds which is which all of us know which is what, what is happening I and mean, that's exactly why Anahazar's moment came how do you prosecute them you can't prosecute them because the permission has to be given by the people who are accused and that's exactly why we wanted the uh, you know investigation agencies and the Loka Yukta and and, uh, and the uh, Lokpal bill and that is the crux of the issue and that's the reason I think I supported uh, the Anna uh, movement I'm also supporting now the Kejival movement for the Jan Lokpal bill but I disagree with these other things including this now which is happening is because uh, see when you elect a corporator today either in Delhi or in Bangalore that's what is the, exactly his representation uh, uh, we have already gone to the ward level or a panchayat level the problem is how do you fix this guy who, who, who swallows us money this looks, this looks to me like a, a communist party manifesto and we all know that on, on paper the communist pa party manifesto sounds good but the problem is that, that when that guy misuses it is very difficult to uh, you know punish him and I think the Jan Lokpal bill was on the right line for the existing uh, you know constitutional structure of the panchayats and the so uh, you believe that the Swaraj bill so is, is think, prone to misuse yeah, you're concerned about that as a member of the party I, I, I think by looking on, on, on the face of it on the face of it I think it's prone to misuse they must strengthen the Jan Lokpal bill and even in the state level the investigation agency whether it could be the CID or all of them must be made autonomous and accountable and that's the reason I said bring that CBI under the Lokpal bill. You know, how do you make him okay, independent, so you, autonomous so and how do you make him accountable? That's very important what you've said. That I'm is going the to way get, to solve the problem. I'm going to get Shazia to respond in just a moment. But Siddharth Bhatia, uh, one of the points Captain Gopinath raised, which Manishankar Ayer also wrote about at length recently was, <laughs> you know, who would the Mohalla Sabhas be able to hold to account? Not the elected MLA, not even their ward councillor that is not elected by them. So at the end of the day, would they really serve a purpose is his question. Would you agree or would you say that this is a, an, an important first step to take to ensure accountability at a local level? No, I think uh, as far as uh, I have seen, firstly, I would make a small request that I be allowed to speak uninter uninterrupted because I, what I saw just now and heard, I mean, that's really ridiculous. If that's what's going to happen, we are going to have fractious arguments all the time. So uh, the first thing is that it is completely and uh, absurdly, I would say, impractical. You're talking about benches. Let's talk about roads. You want to build a road which goes from one mohalla to the sixth mohalla. Every mohalla has to give. Now the third mohalla says, sorry, we have decided this money shouldn't go to a road. This money should go to two benches. What happens? So, of course, there have been problems. But as Captain Gopinath says, you hold those people to account. So that's a governance deficit. It's not about devolution because in Delhi especially and in other cities also the devolution has happened at a quite a uh, micro level. So you still have RWAs which should be able to hold them to account. So you don't want to create structures now which now sit down and discuss every small thing. Secondly, in my opinion it is completely anti-democratic because it surpasses the person who has been sent by the people themselves. So you might as well, as Chandan said, give up on MLAs, yes. give up on MPs, That's give important. up on corporators, and then absolutely say that we go. Remember one thing, if you read about referendums, historically referendums were preferred by the likes of Mussolini and Hitler because you just bypassed all existing structures and it all sounds very romantic, but it's yes. extremely impractical to say the least and it's harebrained. In fact, I would say it's downright anti-democratic.